And I wanted to quickly move on and just talk about this because I thought this was absolutely hilarious because I don't know. I, I, I wonder if it's common sense common when it comes to just, you know, club etiquette and what people do when they go out. I know in some places or some people have this thing where they want to get guest lists to go to certain parties, which is nice. Don't get me wrong. Okay, having a guest list is pretty decent, but arranging it. And I feel like maybe it's because I'm just generally a person that doesn't like asking for help. And I kind of feel a little bit gross and a little bit cringe. Requ sorry, requesting things like that. But just arranging it and getting it sorted, unless a person is re legitimately your friend and somebody you actually know who's going out their way to offer you a guest list and say, hey, by the way, I know you like this club. I'm actually playing here. Would you like to come to, you know, to Boogie and we can have a chat and hang out? And you're like, yeah, of course. It'd be good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while and I want to see you play and I want to go to this club again. Then they put your name down. But I feel like reaching out to people specifically to get on the guest list just feels a little bit gross, feels a little bit slimy. And I say that because I know I've done it myself in the past and it was a really embarrassing and funny story. Because I remember ages ago, this might have been like, this might have been like 2012 or 2013, long, long time ago, when I was first DJing, I got a chance to play at some art gallery, like an after party at an art gallery somewhere in Shoreditch. And um, that was when I was used to play on a flipping controller. That's how long ago it was, right? So I used to play on a controller and then I went to go and um, DJ at this art gallery and I was the only person playing in the beginning. And then I did, and then little did I know that flipping Crystal Clear, the you know world famous DJ and producer, was playing after me. He was at the main attraction at this art gallery thing. I forgot. I think it was an art gallery thing or some sort of party in Shoreditch. And he was playing after me. So it was me, little old me, and art Chris, fucking Chris, Crystal Clear at the party. And you know, at the event, he was really nice. As clearly as you, some of you probably would know him, he's a pretty decent dude. Comes across very well on the internet. And you know, we were we were friendly at the event. Shared a couple of words, and I think we maybe shared some other words on social media. But that was it. But obviously, Agostino, in my head of being naive, I assumed those little words were a sign of friendship, were a sign of kinship. Oh, we're brothers now. We're boys. And then I hadn't talked and spoken to this guy in like I don't know, maybe a decade. I swear to God, right. <laughs> That's why I know he's cringe. So I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to be honest. And I remember I haven't spoken to this guy in a decade. So that happened in like 2012 or say 20. I don't know what year. Just let me say it's, it's a long time ago. Then a decade goes by, and I then randomly, I think I was yeah, that's it. Randomly, I think it was one of my occasions where I went to Bergheim. It might have been 2019, 2017, or something. Somewhere around that kind of age. So come somewhere around that um, year range. And I was like, oh shit, Crystal Clear's playing. I didn't know he was playing. So I was like, oh, let me, let me ask him for a guest list. Because I'd never been in a guest list at Bergen. I was like, oh, I wonder what it's like when you go in that other, other queue over there and you stand on the side and you get a little head nod and you go through and you get a stamp. You don't have to pay up. Oh, that'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? And you get something special. I don't know. Maybe you go for another door. I don't know. Whatever I, I was thinking. So then I go and message him about it. <laughs> and obviously I get left on scene. And then I remember quite soon after, um, what happened? Either he said something, either he tweeted something that was a bit of an indirect or Instagram post that was indirect. And honestly, I swear on my life, it snapped me out of my kind of um, neediness. It's very strange. I think that happens a lot with people because I feel like sometimes when you're requesting stuff from people and you're, and you're kind of trying to suck value from them, all you see is that they're like a value vending machine. You don't actually see the need and the want and the request that you're placing on them. You just see what you can get from them. And you're in this kind of delusion that it's all about you. And I guess at that moment also, think about this, right? This is like 2019. I think it's 2019, 2018. Let's say it's a 2019, 2019. Crystal Clear's profile has increased considerably, right? Since 2012 and 2019. He's legit like a big time DJ. That's why he's playing in Bloody Bergheim. So, you know, maybe he was with me at the fucking short ditch after parties and whatnot and gallery events. Cool. But then he way, way surpassed where I was at by the time 2019 came around. So for me to have this delusion in my head that somehow I was the only person requesting him um, of a guest list that was of merit made no sense because I'm sure he had many people in his inbox that were asking him for something in terms of a guest list. Then I remember him tweeting something or saying something. I forgot what it was. Maybe Instagram story, maybe a tweet that was that sort of felt like a subtweet to me kind of thing, right? And I was like, oh, because about around the same time that I asked him, I got left on scene. And then it suddenly snapped me out of my delusion. It snapped me out of my kind of um, need that I had to kind of get that list. And I was like, oh, yeah, that is a bit weird, isn't it? If you don't know somebody, like, no, like as, as a friend, and then you're just reaching out to them trying to get on the guest list, 
Like, what is that? Do you know what I mean? That's a little bit presumptuous. That's a little bit corny. That's a little bit lame. That's a little bit cringe. That's a little bit everything. And it's something that I wouldn't have done anyway in normal life. I can count on literally one hand the amount of people I've ever asked in my entire clubbing history in life to ever put me on the guest list. It's something that I legitimately abhor. But obviously, if it was me and I was playing somewhere, you know what I mean? I'll get, I'll put everyone on there. I don't really give a crap because I don't have any friends. Violin, right? So I remember that being a thing. We realized, that, oh, that's actually is quite a weird thing. And then, then I think after that is when I realized, I think I did some Googling around and I realized that this is a common thing that happens with DJs that go play in Berkheim. Because I guess it's a big, you know, it's a legendary club um, and everyone wants to kind of get in. And obviously the guest list kind of guarantees you entry. And a lot of people assume if you reach out to a DJ who maybe, let's say, profile isn't the biggest, you could just get on their guest list because, you know, no one knows who they are, which is ridiculous to think that. Because, you're again, you're placing all this importance on you. You're assuming that no one knows who they are, even though they're playing one of the biggest clubs or the most famous club in the world. It's just the, the, the irony is really, you know, it's not lost on me or probably lost on others. But now that I see the light, it's not lost on me. And I remember reading up and then thinking, oh, rah, this is an actual issue a lot of DJs face, like just getting random DMs from people. Again, don't get me wrong, I've, I've met the guy once, but we are nowhere, shape or form friends. Just because you played at some art gallery with somebody 12 years ago doesn't, have, doesn't mean that you've got you know, any right to tell them, oh yeah, would you mind lending me a fiver? Because essentially asking for a guest list is like going up to a stranger and asking for a tenner or DMing somebody that you met ages ago, 10 years ago for a tenner. Would you ever do that? Probably not. So it's the same level of cringe. So it's funny when I stumble across posts and people talking about the whole rules around the guest list stuff, because I'd imagine for the most part, if you are going to get on the guest list, especially in a place like Berghain, the whole premise behind it is that you don't pay. It's like you're a guest of the DJ. But obviously, if you're smart, you just maybe drop the people that are going to do the searching or the entry people like a tip or something. Maybe you give them 10 euros. Maybe you just give them the 20 euros just because the guest list ent- just paid there, whatever the entry fee is because the guest list ensures that you get in. So that's just like a little thank you. Thank you so much for getting me in because I don't understand people who go to clubs with just enough money to get drunk and get high. Go to a club if you've got money enough to tip and to buy your drugs and do your, you know, do your drinking, but don't go there just with like, oh, I've only got 10 euros. Like you're an absolute psycho people that do that. I don't know how you do that, how you survive, but good luck to you. But I would imagine if you do that, the worst question, imagine if there's any, what's the worst question you can think of after you ask somebody for a guest list? Like imagine you go to somebody you don't know, you know, you met them 10 years ago <laughs> and our gallery that doesn't exist anymore in Shoreditch and you ask them, and now it's 10 years later and you ask them for a flipping guest list and they legitimately probably don't even remember who you are. It's been so long. And then um, what's the worst question you, got, you can ask after that follow up? I'll tell you, the worst question you can ask is, can my friend come? <laughs> can we put my friend on the guest list too? I would imagine most people, you know, now I won't say most people, I'd imagine some people would go out of their way if you ask them to maybe just put you down as a plus one because they'd assume you're going to come with a friend because the last thing they want also is for you to just tag along with them and be standing next to the booth like a weirdo just watching them play. They want you to just leave them alone and do your thing and then you can meet each other later in the toilets, whatever it may be. But, imagine asking somebody for a guest list and then the next question you ask to follow up on that is oh can you get my friend on there as well that's a plus one actually could you put do a plus two um and then you and then you reply really late to the names all that sort of stuff i don't know i think people people's um neck and people's uh lack of shame is really incredible like i can honestly say i didn't i didn't even put it I didn't put two and two together. I honestly didn't know it was going to be a bad thing when I initially asked. I just assumed, oh, yeah, I know this guy. And I was in my delusion of like, yeah, I'm the most important person in the world. And also, to be fair to me, I legitimately thought I was the only person I asked. And then it was only doing a couple of Googles around. I found forum posts of people posting. I found people on Twitter and stuff saying, especially DJs complaining because, you know, they love to complain on Twitter. Essentially saying, oh, all these weirdos inboxing me about guest lists, like leave me alone type of thing. I was like, oh, it is kind of weird, isn't it? Asking someone you don't know for a guest list. <laughs> it's legitimately hilarious. But to be fair to the people, myself included, I think the only reason people I, people do that for the most part is just a desperation to get in. Because, you know, I've been out there most recently, just in June, having to wait outside in the queue, in the cold for four hours. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't that cold in June, don't get me wrong. But still, I had to have my parker on. And we were waiting for four hours. And I think that was the kind of replacement um, Club Sylvester for the last year's one. And it's not fun, especially when you're like, you know, you're seeing tons of people getting turned away because 
it's one thing when you go there i've been there before when it's really rammed and they're only letting one in one out and the queue's not moving at all no one's leaving no one's getting in that's kind of like a collective okay cool it's like when everybody gets fired in a company you can't take it personally you know i mean it's kind of easier to take if it's just everyone and not just you so when you're in a queue and there was no one's moving no one's getting in it's okay but you're in a queue and it feels like it's moving like you know every hour but you're seeing mad people getting turned away and everyone's cutting a queue it's just horrible so i think that for those kind of i think everyone that's gone been to that club or has been to a popular nightclub has had those experiences where you've been waiting outside for ages it's probably worse when you're at a really crappy cocktail bar that's also a nightclub and you have to wait for like you know more than flipping i don't know flipping one hour that's already horrendous right you're on some cobbled street with your shiny shoes hurting your soles of your feet and you're having to wait outside and this bounce is clearly letting all these hot girls in before you and these guys with money and you're just standing there <laughs> with your 50 euros in your pocket hoping to get in but it's even worse than your burger because the door's there you will see all the music the flipping lights through the window of panorama bar you're like oh my god please 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 so i think that kind of drives people to be desperate and to kind of do things they probably wouldn't do if they um, weren't so desperate like desperation and first can really turn somebody goo goo gaga and i know that for sure but i think in general the etiquette should be if you are trying to ask or the unwritten rule should be yet to cut an unwritten rule should definitely be if you're gonna ask someone from a guest list i don't recommend it don't ask people for guest list in general you do, unless you know them just go and pay your money and go early enough like i've been plenty of times plenty plenty of times to the bergheim early like legitimately i queued up like saturday 10 p.m so i could get in do you know what i mean like be the first people in and the the, dark, the flipping club is legitimately empty it's a really nice feeling to see you're in the main room and you see it flooding slowly but surely it's absolutely incredible to see by 1 a.m it's absolutely packed but just go early enough you know i mean you don't you know i mean especially if you're on holiday for for the weekend what's the need of trying to go there at a cool time especially if you're on your own just go down early enough hang out you know feel the vibe but at least you get in early and you or if, if, if you get rejected you get rejected early you can make your plans to go elsewhere and you don't have to wait in a cold for ages but if you do ask for a guest list allow asking for the plus one if they put the plus one down or call but just assume there is no plus one but don't you know go there and be like oh you can have a guest list you get it and oh next message by the way one more thing can i put a plus one like that's real c-u-n-t behavior in my opinion but you know what do i know when it comes to that stuff and then the 